Hi, we're here today with Charles Hood from Community Pantry of Truth and Grace Church. I just wanted to let him tell us a little bit about it. Thank you, Charles. Thank you. Uh, tell me about your ministry. What do you do? We provide food uh, and, so, and other necessities to the needy here in our community. Uh, we have, last year, we provided food and necessities to 929 households. This year, as of July 1st, we had hit over 1,100 households. Great, great. Well, I've always told everybody, you have the heart and the head for it. How did you get the heart for it? Growing up in Woodbine, we were we did not have a whole lot growing up. Um, my brother and I would sit on the front porch and wait for the Big Brothers box to come to Christmas uh -huh. because that's where a lot of our Christmas dinner came from. Yeah, so you know it personally, the needs. Yes. All right. Well, what makes it an important ministry today? I mean, we've got food stamps, right? What? We've got food stamps, but they, they don't meet the needs. Uh, you've got more than just physical needs that we have to meet. Uh, you've got people that are that are starving for Christ. They are they are looking. They are they are seeking to fill a void that's within them that is not that's not you're not able to feed with with drugs or alcohol or anything the only thing that's going to feed that right. void is christ yeah well how do you try to meet the spiritual needs i mean i know you give them food that's great do you do anything well what we do is we we talk talk with them building building a relationship right is very important to me because we get to know the people okay a lot of times the people that come here this is the closest you're going to get them to church Right. This is the closest that they're going to get to hear the word of the word of Christ, yeah. and to hear the gospel. Therefore, when they come in here, we have a short time, almost like an elevator speech time, yeah. of where we can we can witness to them and talk to them. My first thing is you know find out where they stand if they're saved, mm -hmm. if they are. Um, you know, if they go to church, mm -hmm. invite them to church first thing and, and make make sure that they are aware that, you know, we will make them comfortable. We will make them comfortable. We will, you know, do everything we can, you know, to make sure, you know, that they feel, feel comfortable about coming here to church. Okay, great. Well, have you had anybody that ever came further with that? Yes, yes. We've had... There was one young lady back a few years ago that had, uh, her mother had called me, and the young lady thought she was a, an atheist. She was 16 years old that, at that time, and uh, I make a point when they're available to put a Bible in the, in the uh, food box. And uh, this is a box that I actually took over to them and dropped it off, and the girl picked up the box and then she sits it down, she picks the Bible up, she says, is this yours? I said, no, it's yours. Mm -hmm. And she said, oh, thank you. And went back in the house. A couple of days later, her mother called me and asked me, said, look, will you come out and talk to her? Uh, she wants to talk to you. Mm -hmm. So I went out and talked to her and she accepted Christ. Wow, great. Now, the 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 story does not stop there. Right. Because a couple of days later, I get a phone call from her grandfather asking if he if I would come over for lunch. So I go I go over to their their house for lunch. I mean, and this was a very nice, you know, the comparison between where the where the daughter lived and the parent and the parents lived is is Big just difference. miles. Yeah, nice the uh, the parents lived over in the Green Hills area. I went up, very nice formal house. Uh, one thing that impressed me is he had a white shirt and tie on when he came to the door, and I was okay. you know really impressed me. And after lunch, we went into his den. 
kept ten. I mean, it was nice. Leather everywhere. And uh, he said, I want to ask you something. How did you reach her? He said, I've been a Baptist deacon for 30 years. How in the world did you reach her? And I told him, I said, look, I said, sometimes, you know, you can't reach somebody that's in your family. It takes somebody from outside. Yeah. Well, he said, would you mind if Sunday, if I baptize her? So that is the, that is how it happens. That's great. That's great. And what do you, I know, it's a lot of work. I know it. Week in and week out, you got to pick up, you got to get it ready. It's a lot of work. How do you feel rewarded by that? I'm doing what God calls me to do. God, had, God put that call on my heart, and I feel like, you know, I'm called to minister. I feel like, you know, the ministry goes a whole lot more than just pulpit ministry. Right. Not saying just pulpit ministry, but the pulpit ministry. Mm -hmm. You know, God puts callings on everybody's heart one way or the other. We just have to seek them out. Okay. All right. Well, man, we appreciate what you do. You're blessing a lot of people. I know a lot of them are very grateful. Every Thursday here at Truth and Grace Church on Lebanon Road behind the Dunkin' Donuts. If you want to volunteer and help, I'm sure you could use help. Yes. Thank you for watching.